Welcome to Renewable English and our sixth interview now. Um, we've got an incredibly special guest with us here today, all the way from Australia. It's Kate. She's the Plastic Free Mermaid. She's an activist, a free diver, an author. She's been free from plastics for over a decade. She's a role model. She's basically something we all want to be. So hi there, Kate. Thank you so much for joining us. Hello, thank you so much for having me. It's a, a real pleasure. So if it's okay, I'd like to ask you a few questions because as, as I said, you've been plastic free for over a decade. I think I've been plastic free for maybe a day and a half, but I'm trying my best. If, if, it all adds up. <laughs> exactly. Every every day um, we're using less and less plastic. So um, and yeah, it's because of people like yourself inspiring us. So if I could just ask you a few questions, that would be wonderful. Let's do it. Excellent. So um, what was it that made you go plastic free? Mm, well, I was volunteering with a nonprofit in California, this Ocean Future Society, started by Jean-Michel Cousteau. And uh, I was working for a scientist who was studying microorganisms ingesting microplastics. And I was like, what does that mean? And she explained that plastic does not, does not break down into the environment like a banana peel or some organic matter. She explained that plastic actually breaks up into tinier and tinier pieces until they're microscopic and we can't even see them. Um, and that's when they start to wreak havoc on the food chain because plankton ingest these tiny little microscopic bits and then they get eaten by larger fish and get eaten by larger fish. And it actually, um, the toxicity of plastic biomagnifies up the food chain. Uh, so I was so shocked because I was using plastic on a daily basis, um, having no idea the pollution impact um, or the toxicity that the plastic, uh, you know, it's very harmful to the environment as well as human health. And so I was just overwhelmed and I thought, man, of all the things affecting the planet, this is one thing that I can stop. I don't need single use plastic bottles, cups, bags, any of that stuff. I can live without plastic. So I quit. <laughs> wow. Um, I I really love what you said there about the the not the the living without single use plastics the the bottles and stuff like that especially I mean it's so easy um yeah. in the in the last lesson I, I actually I was in the supermarket looking at all the different things that, that had plastic and there's nothing that makes me more angry in the world than bottled water it makes me so angry it makes my blood boil it's, it's one of those things that gets me but what about like a banana or an orange wrapped in plastic? That was literally the first right. thing I picked up in the supermarket and I said, it's like they don't have their own wrappers already. Um, it's, I know. why? Yeah. Why? Yeah. I, I, Boycott, I, all of that. <laughs> just, it, does, it doesn't make any sense. It makes no sense to me at all. And yeah, um, it would be so easy for it to be stopped and you know these huge companies would be saving money by not creating this plastic in the first place that they don't even need yeah Ooh. but they have deals with big oil exactly <laughs> those, those guys yeah those guys yeah. wouldn't be yeah those guys would be losing money so that yeah that's yeah. a good point um so other than the the obvious ways of reducing plastic like not buying these bananas that are wrapped in plastic can you tell us some conventional and unconventional ways to reduce our plastic use? Sure, of course. Um, I, and I, I'd like to say that, you know, when in the conventional sense of just stop buying it, um, the easier said than done. The hard part is in the moment when you want the banana, when you're hungry or you're thirsty and you want the water and you're like, I'm, I must drink water to survive and you kind of start to justify in your head, the hard part is to catch that internal conversation where you're trying to justify this, this purchase and remember that it's in those moments where we rise above that like kind of basic urge to just satisfy our need and rise above our privilege and just say, I'm gonna go without, like I'm gonna be okay if I don't drink this water, there's gonna be a drinking fountain somewhere. I'm just gonna experience hunger for like, an hour until I find something else in the supermarket that can satisfy this need. Um, and that's the real growth as we kind of like step into our power and step into our sovereignty and say, 
I actually don't need this plastic thing that is being offered to me by the supermarket that continues to, um, you know, just perpetuate the overconsumption and the pollution and all these sort of like nasty habits that have gotten into this environmental mess. Um, so it, it's definitely, uh, yes, buy less plastic, um, shop at the bulk food store, make your own products, um, which I'll go into, and you know, be an example in your community and um, start to normalize bringing your own reusables. Um, and these, all of these things, if you can commit to these, will make you feel so good and connected to something higher, like beyond your own desires and your own impulses to eat the banana or drink the water. It's, you feel connected, you feel a part of something greater, you feel a part of um, the ecosystem, you feel connected to nature, you feel connected to a movement towards a healthier planet. Um, and that, there's, the banana can't do that for you. <laughs> it feels so good to be a part of that activism and that action and that movement. Um, so I, I encourage people that as you avoid the plastics to really allow that feeling of like, I am taking action for the planet to sink in and just become a part of your being um, and attach that to your identity. Like, yes, I'm environmentalist. Yes, I'm acting for my environment, for my earth. So there's a bit of like um, deeper stuff going on there for you, a little bit of activism. Um, but more practically speaking, uh, I think one, one thing that's really helpful is to do a trash audit. So this is probably a bit more unconventional and you can just go to your trash bin right now and dump it out on the lawn and just sort through and see what plastic you individually are using. Because I can tell you, don't buy that plastic packaged banana, don't buy that water, but if you're already not buying that, you, know, you need to look at specifically what is in your trash. Is it shampoo bottles? Is it milk bottle? Is it, um, you know, candy wrappers, whatever it is. And then you're like, okay, I need to actually target these specific things. And then you can, instead of buying the shampoo bottle, you can maybe make your own with soap nuts or buy a shampoo bar from your local markets. Um, you know, you can make your own plant milk. It's super easy. Soak some almonds, blend them up, strain them. <laughs> um, you can, make your own, what was the other thing? Oh, candy, you can make your own like bliss balls, you know? So just like, instead of um, making this like, oh my gosh, what a huge thing I have to put plastics, just see the plastics you already use and then make a targeted plan to, to phase them out. Um, I make all my own bath products, beauty products, cleaning products, all my own food, anything that comes packaged in plastic I make. And it just takes um, scheduling, you know? So like, where in my month can I carve out an hour to make some plant milk, make some bliss balls, make my deodorant, make my shampoo, whatever, um, and just scheduling it in. I love that. Um, right early in the, so in Spain, we had a really harsh quarantine at the, um, at the start of all of this craziness. Um, and that was something my daughter and I decided to do that we'd make a list of, our recycling so we had our you know each week we'd take it out and we had a graph so we were trying to reduce you know the plastic and you know it, it was that visualizing of it that it made such a huge impact but again like you say if I went and look now it would be the sweet wrappers and stuff like that that right. and it's the con I really like what you mentioned about the you know stop that urge that, yeah. you know, and think about you know that you're doing this for the planet rather than oh i really fancy it's having a candy bar. bar yeah <laughs> exactly yeah. um brilliant that is brilliant so i think you touched on this one a bit before but why do you think people continue to use so much unnecessary plastic hmm. i mean it's quite difficult to go completely plastic free like yourself with the you know it, it's a target, it's a goal that I believe everyone should have, but yeah. it's the unnecessary plastics that people don't cut out. Why do you think that is? Yeah, I mean, to your point, my keyboard has plastic. Like I have a separate bamboo keyboard and mouse, but like a lot, I'm not even totally, totally, totally plastic free. So we're all aiming and striving for perfection, but we don't need to be perfect, we just need to be trying. We all need to be trying. We all need to be doing 
you know, awareness of our recycling, just sitting in that, with that discomfort and we'll make mistakes. That's actually part of the cycle of change. If we fall off the wagon, the important part is that we get back on and keep trying. So you're, you know, we all mess up and make mistakes. So there's never going to be perfection. It's just that, that, you know, growing process. Um, why I think people don't, people use a lot of plastic is because of the lack of awareness. I don't, I think people kind of realize that plastic is polluting, um, but they don't know the solutions. They don't know what to do differently. They don't know, they don't think they have time to make their own products. They don't think they're going to function as well. And sometimes they don't. So we have to kind of adjust our expectations as well. So I think there's a lack of awareness um, about how bad plastic is both like they, people don't realize how toxic it is for our health and how we're actually, we, we're making ourselves sick. Um, they don't realize that plastic doesn't get recycled. They don't, they don't realize it's actually just like, you know, sitting in landfills all over the world. But sometimes, in, you know, we ship, we export our trash to Southeast Asia, to these places that we consider paradise that we want to travel to. Um, and it just sits there for a thousand years. It doesn't break down. Um, so, so people aren't aware that, that there's no real safe life cycle for it. Um, it's kind of linear instead of circular. Um, and people are unaware of the options. They don't, the alternatives, they don't think they're, um, easy or can fit into their lifestyle. They don't want to sacrifice the convenience. They don't want to sacrifice the luxury, which is, um, you know, it's, it's makes it's quite myopic, it's so short-sighted because we are now finding ourselves living amongst our trash, living amongst microplastics in our water. Um, and so we're living amongst our trash. So it's a silly thing that we think we're sacrificing convenience or our luxury when we're then now in, because of those choices, now we're in, you know, trash is all around us. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think, I think those are kind of the main reasons um, that people just continue to use it. Yeah. So I've got one more question for you. Um, yeah. Now at Renewable English, what we try and do is uh, what we believe is trying to promote kind of positivity because a lot of um, uh, climate change is an awful thing. Climate change is a terrible thing. It's a man-made thing that we've done um, that, you know, are our parents have done, our grandparents have done, people are yeah. still doing now. It's, it is, it's a horrifying thing. Um, and it is something I believe everybody, you know, should be angry about. The only problem is when you get angry about something and tell somebody, you know, what you're doing is wrong, what you're doing is bad, that gets them defensive, you know? So if you tell somebody they shouldn't be eating a beef burger, they'll go and get a double whopper or, or whatever, you know, so it'll get their backs up. So the, the last question um, I want to ask you to, to kind of help with me, I, I'm trying to use positive stories like yourself, um, like Kids Against Plastic, who I spoke about. So I want to know how we can open people's eyes, but without seeming like, you know, too preachy or without seeming like we know better than you, just kind right. of yeah without shaming and guilting because i agree when i first started on my journey all i could i i was like oh my gosh the pictures of turtles with plastic up their nose and you know these horrible videos of dolphins entangled in plastic nets and and that's that like that urgency that we feel once we've learned that oh my gosh our planet our our dolphins our whales are you know we're being affected by this this is so frustrating come on we have to take action right, right now like oh and you just get filled with that passion and that's healthy, that's important, we need that. Um, but you're right, I was witnessing, I was watching, I was observing all the environmental organizations, like sharing this fear, like putting the fear on people and like wanting to get signatures and people were kind of like, I don't, I don't want that. Like I've got enough going on in my life. I'm just trying to feed my family. I'm just trying to get through the day. I have stuff, COVID, I'm stressed, you know? So someone that's like, yeah, it, it, is, it creates, um, like you said, resistance. And so instead, if we can lead with solutions, if we can lead with inspiration, if we can lead by example with grace um, and a bit of humor and cheekiness, that's why I'm a mermaid. So I like to tell people that I'm allergic to plastic, um, that I was sent here by the mermaid community to like get legs and come onto land and like figure out why humans are so obsessed with this plastic that's polluting our ocean and our planet that we share. 
Um, and so if we can be playful and fun and if we can get someone laughing and smiling and you know, then they're already feeling good. And then we can talk about like, oh, it's so frustrating. Like, I don't know why people are handing out single use plastic at this cafe. Like it doesn't biodegrade, it's so irresponsible. Like maybe we could bring our own cups or you know, in line at the cafe. Do you guys have a discount for people that bring their own cup? Like, did anybody else bring their cup? From oh, mom, getting that discount, you know, or um, just being just being positive because, um, you know, whenever we point the finger and we're like, "You're doing this," shame, guilt. Um, there's three fingers pointing back at us, and we have to really always be examining our behavior, and we want to show up in love. We want to bring more beauty and trust and community and collaboration and solutions to the table instead of like fear and scarcity and like shame and guilt like we don't need any more of that on this planet um so yeah I think I love the thing that there's three fingers pointing back at us and I will never shame anyone about their plastic use because I'm still working on my carbon footprint I'm still working on understanding the climate solutions I'm still working on my diet I'm still working on so many aspects of my life and so I who am I to point the finger like I just want to inspire and share solutions and share laughter with people and have connection um so I think that that's that's my favorite way to be an activist is to lead by example that's absolutely fantastic um and you are leading by example um you're inspiring hundreds of thousands of people um <laughs> which is brilliant um so I want to say thank you, um, not only for, for coming on Renewable English, but, but thank you for everything you're doing um, and the steps that you're taking and the things that you're doing to help our planet. I know it's been said a thousand times, there is no planet B. And it's people like you inspiring people all over the world that are going to make a difference, that are going to, to help us you know, cure our planet. So thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Harry, and thank you for what you're doing, educating, and for the opportunity to share my story. It's such a pleasure and an honor to be doing this work and to meet you and connect with, with all of your students. So well done. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.